is caused by the Vibrio cholerae bacteria, which is commonly found in water that's been standing by itself for a while or that's been contaminated with waste and other things like that. And its origins can trace back to the, the, the late 19th century on a, on a reservoir on the Ganges River. And um, it can cause stomach viruses, diarrhea, dysentery, which is basically when you're, uh, when you're defecating and the, um, the waste pulls down the stomach cells and it can cause much more. But origin. It originated in the Ganges River in the, in, in the 19th century and the nearby inhabitants, as shown in this picture, they were unaware of how much they were actually polluting the river. And many people actually use the river for recreation and also for drinking. And so the bacteria started to multiply and affect the people who actually used it. And Filippo Pacini was born in Pistoia, Italy in 1812. He uh, discovered the disease while, while it was unnamed, but he began to write journals on the disease until a name was actually given. Symptoms. Victims actually have no idea that they have the disease until its final moments, which is why it's effective as a biological weapon, which I'll tell you later. And its symptoms are dehydration, diarrhea, dysentery, weak and shriveled skin, blindness from the lack of nutrients from the body, and much more. And these two pictures are just pictures of the actual bacteria, seen that microscope, contracting the, the disease. Dysentery and cholera can, can occur after c consuming food or drinking water that have those microorganisms that can affect you with it. And once it's in your body, the, the um, microorganisms line up on your large intestine and your small intestine, and they start to eat off of it and gain nutrients from it. But once the uh, toxins die, I mean, but once the microorganisms die, the toxins are released, and the body tries to flush out the microorganisms and the toxins, which, which results in diarrhea and other symptoms. And another theory about the cause is that um, it may be airborne, and these uh, bad air particles, they come from decaying organ matter, I mean, organ matter called miasmata. But people have been doing research on that cause, but there's not enough evidence to actually call it a real cause of color because it doesn't really show up now. And this uh, chart is basically a picture showing how cholera has spread around the uh, last half a century. Well, the disease started in the late 18th century, but since the, since the disease uh, components were still developing, it stayed around India and the contiguous countries. And so once the disease started to develop more, in the 1960s to 1970s, it started to spread around Asia and the uh, bordering countries of, of India. And then in 1970 to 1990, there was a huge burst, a uh, huge burst of spreading around the world, and it's almost global. And now, in 1990 to 2004, cholera is basically global, but it still managed to not affect all countries. But uh, the countries that are darker brown are the ones where the cases have been the highest. And you'll see it's in uh, Bangladesh, parts of Africa, and poverty uh, stricken countries that can't really afford the correct treatments for the disease. Now, the epidemic of 1832, which was around the uh, time where the disease started to actually come to itself, was one of the most notable epidemics ever recorded in history because it killed over 100,000 people. And this picture is a sketch of one of the posters that would be put up in the streets during the, um, during, during the epidemic. And the steps are just showing how to pre prevent getting the disease. But on the bottom is just a kind of a guideline to see if you have it or if someone else has the disease. And this was really important to all the inhabitants of the area. And after the breakout of the disease, many epidemics have occurred, but this is the most notable. And it took place in New York, but the cause was unknown because they were just figuring out things about the disease. And uh, the people were flooding the streets in terror because they had no idea what was actually going on. It killed over 100,000 people, and it, called, and it caused all of the healthy inhabitants to flee to the countryside as far as New Jersey. Now, 
there are, uh, even though cholera is, is an extremely deadly disease, they have uh, treatments that can treat the disease in a matter of minutes. Uh, for example, uh, this was developed recently, but they are called oral rehydration salts, and they are a mix of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, trisodium citrate, dihydrate, and glucose, anhydrous, water, and other different chemicals that can kill the bacteria. And 80% of people can actually be cured by the oral rehydration salts, and the other 20% have a case of it that's so severe that they may not be able to cure. And the treatment and other treatments are live vaccines, which contain a small part of the actual disease, but they contain antigens and antibodies that will actually um, take, the, take the disease out of your body. And the kill vaccines are just a full dose of, uh, of chemicals that can kill the vaccine, I mean, that can kill the bacteria that's in your body. And um, there are also many herbal treatments that were developed while there was no cure actually available. And but the most common are the strength herbs, which can uh, shrink the body tissue, or especially the stomach. And it gives the bacteria no space to grow and no space to actually spread around your, your large intestines and uh, microorganisms usually are flushed out. And biological warfare. Uh, cholera is used frequently as a biological weapon. For example, by uh, Japanese prisoners uh, were using it on uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, during war, they were using cholera, and also in World War I, other allegations of attempts by Germany and other countries were uh, used to um, spread cholera in Italy. And this picture is a list of different agents of biological warfare, and you can see under biological agents you have cholera, and it was probably one of the most effective bio bacterial agents because it can kill a healthy adult in, in under four hours. And future research has been done on cholera to show that uh, opponents of the actual bacteria and microorganisms can help, si can, can help scientists further research on cell biology and physiology because it has unique components that are not found in any other diseases and it gives, people, it gives scientists new insight on what can actually be done. Any questions? Waste. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? 